Welcome back to Math with me, Marisa Lopez, your second grade math virtual content specialist. Think of me as your teacher's helper. In this video, we will be working with money. How exciting. I can't wait to get started. Today, we will be answering this question. How can you solve word problems involving the total value of a group of coins? Hmm. As previously mentioned, this week's lessons are all about money. In this video, we will be learning about coin names, their values, writing down the total amount of money we have, solving problems involving the total value of a group of coins. Let's start by learning what the front and the back of the coins look like, or as we call them, heads and tails, as well as what each coin is worth. So let's see, the first one right here is made of copper. It's a different color than the other coins and it's called a penny. And a penny is worth one cent. Now, this is what the front or the head of the penny looks like. And this is what the tail of the penny looks like. The next coin is called a nickel and the nickel is worth five cents. This is the head of the nickel. This is the tail of the nickel. The quarter is worth 25 cents. This is the head of the quarter, and this is the tail of the quarter. Half dollar is not commonly used, but it's worth 50 cents. And this is what the head of the half dollar looks like, and this is what the tail of the half dollar looks like. The next coin is the dime, and the dime is worth 10 cents. This is the head of the dime, this is the tail of the dime. And the last, um, the last one we are going to review is a dollar. Sure, many of you have seen the dollar. This is the front of the $1 bill, and this is the back of the $1 bill. Now, $1 is also equal to 100 cents. When you are writing about coin values or monetary amounts, there are some symbols we use. The one that looks like a letter C with a line through it, that is the cent symbol, and it is written after the amount of cents one has. So for example, if you have 15 cents, you write the number 15 first and then the cent symbol. If you have five cents, you write the number five first and then the cent symbol. The next symbol we use is the dollar symbol. Now, usually we use the cent symbol when we have no dollars. We're only talking about cents. When we're speaking about dollars, we use this letter S with a line through it. That is the dollar symbol. Um, if we have $1.25, we write it like this, $1 first and then 25 cents. Now, if you notice, the, there is a period in between the 1 and the 25. That is called a decimal point, and it basically just splits the dollar and the 25 cents. When you have dollars and cents, you do not need to use both symbols. You only use the dollar symbol. Also, sometimes when people have um, like 45 cents, sometimes they'll put a zero for zero dollars and 45 cents, but notice they're only using the dollar symbol. They're not using both. And let's look at an example from today's lesson. Danny has two dimes, one quarter, three nickels, and five pennies. It says to draw a model to represent the situation. Now, if they're asking us to draw a model to represent the situation, I'm going to show you a few ways that you can make a model for this problem. The first way is by searching for the images and pasting them in here like this. You can go to the top where it says insert and you click on image. And instead of uploading from computer, you can click search the web. Now here in this little search box that appears, you can type whatever it is you want to find an image of. So if you want dimes, because Danny has two dimes, we can type dime, and it shows you many pictures of different dimes. Pick the one you like and drag it over. Okay, now Danny has two dimes, so what I'm going to do is make this smaller so that I have enough room for all of the coins I need to put in here. And then while it's still selected with the blue squares, I'm going to hit edit copy and then edit paste. And there I have my two dimes. Those are the little red helper lines that are making sure everything is aligned. 
Now the next um, coin that Danny has is a quarter. I'm searching for quarter, drag the quarter that I like, put it in here. Make it smaller. Remember the quarter is bigger than the dime, so I'm not gonna make it that much smaller. And now we need three nickels. All right, I like this nickel. Again, resize it. Remember we need three of these, same exact ones. So I'm going to, a nickel is also a little bit bigger than a dime. While it's still selected, I'm going to edit copy, edit paste. And there we have our three nickels. And then lastly, Danny has five pennies. So let's search for a penny. All right, now I would say that this is one of the quickest ways to show Danny's coins. Um, there's also another way that you can do it, which is through the virtual manipulatives, Didax, which I also teach you how to use in a different video titled, How to Use the Virtual Manipulatives on Didax. The other way of representing Danny's coins in a model, um, some people like to do this, uh, is insert shape then go to shapes and click on circle so then we have a circle here I want to make it white so I just use the paint can tool while it was still selected click on white then I'm gonna go here to the letter T with the squares around it and make a little text box inside of this circle and I'm gonna put the first letter of the coin that it is so I can either choose to use the letter D for dime. Some people just like to write the amount inside the circle, like 10 cents. Okay, I fast forwarded a little bit, but I did the same thing. Insert shape, circle, um, put a text box in each of these and put the value. So 10 cents, two dimes, one quarter, 25 cents, three nickels, five cents, five cents, five cents, five pennies. That's one cent, one cent, one cent, one cent, one cent. Now, I found this way to actually take longer than just finding the images and pasting them in here. The last way is by using good old fashioned pencil and paper, right? So if technology is not your friend today, that's fine. I'm sure your teacher will accept for you to write it with using pencil and paper. So if you can see in my camera, I actually just did circles with the first letter of the coin, right? So two dimes, one quarter, three nickels, uh, five pennies. On the next slide, they want us to answer these two questions regarding Danny's coins. The first one says, what is the total value of Danny's coins? Remember, we learned three different ways to model Danny's coins. I'm going to stick with the first one we did by searching for the images and pasting them. This is the way I decided to model Danny's coins. Maybe your model looks different than mine and that's okay. Now they are asking us to show two different ways that Danny might add to find the total. Use any strategy to solve the problem. So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to find two different ways to add Danny's coins in order to find the total. Do not worry if you did not get to finish. Feel free to pause this video and finish your work if you need to. 
Once you are done, we will be analyzing the work of another student and you will have a chance to compare your work to the work of that student. All right, let's analyze this student's work. So this student grouped all of the coins that Danny had that were similar. So all of the dimes were grouped together and he decided to show that there is a total of 20 cents in dimes by drawing lines, grouping the dimes together. The student left the quarters alone, but then wrote the value again at the bottom, 25 cents. Then the student grouped all of the nickels together and wrote here with two lines that there's a total of 15 cents in nickels. The student then grouped all of the pennies together and drew two lines saying there's a total of five cents in pennies. Now, the first way the student added them together was by joining uh, the 20 and the 25 to make 45 and then join together 15 and five that made 20. So they made friendlier numbers to work with. That created a new equation, 45 plus 20 equals 65. Then they answered the question in a sentence. The total value of Danny's coins is 65 cents. The second way, the student did not group any of the add-ins together. They kind of just counted on um, and decomposed uh, the 15. They decomposed the 15 into a 10 and a 5. So they're working with friendly landmark numbers. They started with the 25, which is the largest number in the equation. They added 20, that gave them 45. And then 45 plus a jump of 10, that's 55. Plus 5 is 60, plus 5 is 65. So both ways are correct. They, the answer was 65 cents both times. Do not worry if your strategy looks a little different as long as you have 65 cents as well. What is similar and what is different from your model or drawings in comparison to the student work that you see here? I want you to think about that. Did you get the same answer? Awesome, I am so proud of you. I know that you are doing your very best work and that makes me very proud. All right, friends, we have reached the end of our video for today. You learned a lot about coin values and how to write the total amount of money you have when solving a problem involving coins. Don't forget to save your work to show it to your teacher. Keep up the great work, mathematician. Until next time, bye-bye.